What's up guys? This is the part I'm doing for Johnny Five for Saunders Machine Works and let's get into it. So there was a list of parts that I could choose from and I chose what seemed to be like medium complicated level out of the things that were on there. This is no fifth ass fifth oh god fifth axis part. It's pretty simple three axis part. The most difficult part is this uh one thousands call call out call out call out on this bearing seat and the angled slot or the angled uh, uh, bore right here so as you can see that uh, that's not exactly straight up and down that would make it nice and easy you know and then there's these two side bores on these two shoulders and then kind of along the lines of these this also needs to be a squared corner so this has to be milled when you do this uh this bore here and that's kind of difficult because you'll see in this video we went ahead and did the entire top part so basically this section made it all pretty and everything and you'll you're going to have corner radiuses in here because of the the end mill i went down with the 316th end mill that's the smallest you get but it's still going to have a radius so when we do actually flip the part up and do this kind of work and we have the end mill right here cutting this we need to cut that corner but we also need to be careful about blending the corner and uh, basically not marring up the surface and killing the tolerance on that I have no real way of measuring this distance from this distance but I mean I guess you can measure this to there with calipers but uh, yeah so yeah so basically this first video is me going over the first op and then subsequent videos will be about doing the rest of them so if that's something you're interested in following along then hit the subscribe button and let's get into it what's going on peoples today we're working on a part for johnny 5 nyc cnc signed up for that yep i'm pretty pretty uh pretty important now so this is the part now you may be wondering well you i've already made it so what's the point of this video well that one's bad, so we're going to uh, have to try again. So what happened on this one was these this uh, bearing seat needs to be within plus or minus one thou, and it's off by twenty thou. So very very close, obviously. Uh, I think I had something the wear comp and the the haws wrong. So on the one I did the contour with. So yeah, we're gonna take this nice piece of material and we're going to pop one of these out of that so it just barely is just barely uh wide enough but yeah this is actually cut on a bandsaw down here so it's ex not exactly straight so we're going to need to clean the edge up so it sits on the vise nice and then um yeah then we'll then we'll go from there so follow along Okay, sweet. So we got the Johnny Five part up here modeled, and I have my table modeled. Right now there's no rotary on it, so don't worry about it, but usually there's a rotary on it. And uh, we have it, this part modeled up in stock, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and square that piece. Uh, that way it sits in the jaws of the vise straight, and we have no rigidity issues, because I just measured this thing, and it measures like... Uh, 100 thou of a difference between the ends and it is uh, seven and a half inches long so having that much change over that long of a distance you're gonna have a lot of rigidity issues because obviously the vise is not holding it square so what I'm saying is we're going to square the stock by doing a quick little contour around it and then after that what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and then we're gonna go ahead and do our actual uh, toolpath stuff so let's go ahead and square it up on the machine. Okay, so we're going to toss this hot boy into here. I'm going to put the side that's sort of flat against the hard jaw in the back. Like so. Kind of in the middle. Like so. And let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So that's square against the back, and that's how much of a gap there is, you can see. Wider on this side, narrower on this side. That's why you get this nice gap. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to run a contour that comes 25 thou below the surface, runs it around. We'll have a nice, it'll be nice and square to the uh, machine. Then we'll flip it over and then we'll do our actual operations on that side, just so it's nice and square. And this is mostly for rigidity because honestly, you could just run it that way as long as your part fit within the boundaries of that, um, obviously, but we're doing, doing fancy parts here, so we gotta do fancy things. So what it's gonna do first is it's gonna probe our far end by updating the uh, G54 that was originally set. Cool, now it's gonna probe Z. So now it knows like back and forth, it's right, it's directly in the center because it's updated. Now we're gonna see if this actually cuts. Alright, awesome. So we should have a pretty successful. Uh, see, you can see it stops cutting there. <laughs> very, uh, very cool. and tight and hit her down. Oh god. It's in my eyes! Okay, so now that we don't have done that, you can see it cut here, but not there. Zero transitions. And there's a cut all the way along the back side, and cuts on the side, obviously. Okay guys, here's the actual tool path we're going to be using. I know that the operations aren't showing. I have no idea why it's an OBS issue, so I'm just going to like explain them really quick. So first we're going to probe XYZ, which is going to give us, it's going to update our G54. Then we're going to face, we're basically just going to rip through all this material. Uh, actually, I need to change that really quick. We're going to 75. Cool. Then we're going to do an adaptive and we're going to murder the material out of the way. Then we're going to do a parallel for the top. Uh, the way I get it to ignore the holes with a parallel, usually the parallel will want to like just do the top surface. If you go into the patch environment, you can patch these as bodies. And then in the actual parallel toolpath, you have to select all the bodies as part of the model. Uh, yeah, so I can't really show you that because the tabs won't open on OBS, but trust me. Then we're going to do adaptives to bore out all those holes. The reason they're in separate operations is because I want to go below the part into the stock. Then we're going to actually do the contours. Then we're going to do the, let's see, drilling, spot drill, then drill through with a quarter inch form tap drill just for clearance. Then we're going to actually come in here, bore them out with the 316th four flute. Same thing, contour, contour this outside uh, just because there's this sharp corner and this 316th will get closer to this corner than the bigger. Um, 7 sixteenths tool wheel, and then we have a bunch of chamfers after that. So let's uh, post this out. I'm running a VF2SS, so we have a high feed rate of 833, and it's on a network. So yeah, post that out, and let's head over to the machine. Cool, so there's our stock loaded, and we're going to Make sure high-speed machining is turned on. I'm too poor to buy it, so we're running the uh, trial. Cool. Cool. Ooh, ooh. So this is going to probe ever so slowly because I forgot to change the feed rate. Here we go. I'm going to go face first.
what's happening. And yeah, here comes the fun part. So I'm going to turn air blast on so you guys can actually see. Spot drill. Nice half inch carbide spot drill. So four of these holes are the same size and the two on the right are actually smaller. So this bore I forgot to change, but it doesn't actually need to do this. It's not even cutting the walls. Oh yeah, I forgot this was in here, tool check. Just making sure the tool's not in half in the bottom of a ditch somewhere after a wild night out on the town, you know? And champers, which uh, apparently doesn't like pulling. Doing the champers like this makes the part look really good looking. We'll see how it handles that inner radius that I was talking about before. Oh, not too bad. A little bit of a chirp. Very cool. So I measured these inner bores, the actual bearing pocket, I'm guessing. Unless this one's the bearing pocket. But I'm guessing it's this one. So this is supposed to be 150, and it's a couple fat out, pretty normal, can contour it. This is cutting way, way undersized for some reason, or is it oversized? Undersized, yeah. Like 20 thou undersized. So I need to kind of go into fusion and uh, see what I can figure out. But uh, yeah. Okay, so the I had the contour leave 5 thou uh, radially, that's why. I knew that for some reason, but I wasn't thinking. So I put it down to zero. We're going to cut it again, check what they are, and then we'll start updating tool wear in the control. And yeah, we'll go on from there. I'm actually not going to continue after that we fix that error because uh, what happened was when I was dry machining, just for video's sake, it wrapped a bunch of chips around the end mill and then it absolutely tore the surface up, which kind of sucks. So. Uh, we'll just have to do the parallel after all the drilling and the contouring or in the boring is done. That way you're guaranteed the surface finish on the top is nice. But yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and run this contour. And then I will cut up another piece of stock. And all will be good.
Okay, boys, I got the results we've been looking for. So, we have our mic here. This is for the big hole, which is supposed to be 152. So here's what we got. Pretty much uh, 151.9 and zero tenths. So we're one foul away. So if you check it out a bunch of different times, then we're pretty close to one foul away. So the the bearing pocket is really hard to measure with the tools I have. And of course I decided to pick one of the harder parts on the pick page. So like I said, this seat calls for one foul, plus or minus. But the good news is because we were plus or minus one on this wall, and I can sort of measure this as being, it's within two, but I, I think that's my tools. What I'm gonna do is just update the wear for that tool in here uh, to be um, one foul down. So now it's negative. So we're gonna run it again and see if that helps us. Alright, so based on that one thou wear update, here is the oh sorry, here's the actual bearing seat. Uh, oops, wrong way on the gauge. Oh, money, 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 money. So yeah, obviously, obviously within a thou now. So you can read it a couple different ways, but we're, uh, that's pretty uh, dead nuts if I do say so myself. So that's good. So that, that means the next time we run the part, it should be all set with those wear, uh, wear uh, updates on the actual controller. Because the cutter I'm using is only for contouring, not roughing, and I'm using a 3 8 to rough the actual uh, profile out and do this top part. So I'm gonna cut up another piece of stock. So this will be part number three, but third time's a charm. And uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, I got a new piece being cut. All right, so I got our new piece of stock. Here she is. She's about to become a beautiful part. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the vise, and we're gonna do that squaring thing again. And I think I'm gonna put it down like this so we eat these shoulders up. All right, she's loaded up. All right, cool. The machine shut off because of my voltage problems, but I explain that in another video. Oh God, she's beautiful. And none of those weird tool marks from the spinning thing because I did the parallel after all the whole work was done. So yeah, she's uh, she's she's good looking, but I'm uh, kind of scared to measure it because I'm probably gonna put measure marks all over it. So Oh well, take a couple pictures and then uh, that'll be it. And then we'll check these bores and stuff. And I realized I wasn't doing a contour finishing this last pocket here. So I'm gonna do that. That's what I was trying to do before it, the machine shut off. So yeah. All right, so this is gonna conclude this first part to this Johnny Five part. So if you wanna see the rest of it, go ahead and subscribe and do all that stuff. Um, yeah, quick little note. If you keep changing the wear in your wear offsets and nothing's happening, it's probably because you forgot to turn in control on Infusion. So keep that in mind. All right, well, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.